Well, there's been a bit of snow in the UK. And when you've got two tons, rear wheel drive, summer tires, and instant torque from an electric motor, it's kind of a bit of a recipe for disaster. So let me show you what you can do about it. Now, before I get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. It could be specific to the Leap Motor C10 or general driving an EV or vehicle information. Subscribe. Now, what credentials do I have to offer an opinion on this and offer you some information? I lived in the Alps for a couple of years. I'm very familiar with driving on snow. The number one thing you can do is fit winter tires to your vehicle. That is by far the biggest change you can have. There's always gonna be a little bit of fighting physic when you've got a large rear wheel drive SUV. I've seen loads of comments this last week in the owners group of people saying it's the worst car they've ever driven in the snow. They may never have driven a rear wheel drive car. If they have, they probably haven't driven a high power one. Um, my previous long term vehicle was a two ton Mercedes S class. Also a very large, very long wheelbase, very heavy vehicle. Also rear wheel drive, lots of torque. I'm very familiar with driving in slippery conditions, driving in the snow and driving large rear wheel drive vehicles. Besides that, driven many high power, 500, 600 horsepower AMG powered vehicles and have worked in the motor trade my whole life. So let's get into what you should actually do. If you can't feasibly fit winter tires and you can't avoid driving and you really must go out, then these are the settings you need that will make a difference to how this vehicle drives. So first of all, we're gonna pop into the settings and we're gonna go over to driving and we're gonna make sure we turn one pedal mode off, okay? Apologies for the sunlight. Now, what we wanna have a look at, if you look at this comparison chart, what you want is you want the most gentle acceleration, but you also want the most gentle regenerative braking. So at the moment, you've got smooth acceleration in eco and you've got low regenerative braking in comfort. So you may find that um, driving it in comfort might give you the best uh, chance, but that right hand pedal down there is very, very sensitive. And so there's some, um, what we can do, I normally drive in eco, but if we click on custom and then we click on custom again, it now enables us to customize what we want to do, okay? So what we're trying to do is desensitize the right-hand throttle pedal, okay? So I would suggest smooth, I would suggest low, and then steering mode doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, if you want it on comfort, then fine. If you tap away from that and then click on comparison, then you should see that reflected in the chart there, okay? So that's what we've selected in custom. So we've selected custom mode up here. We've, we've turned off one pedal mode. You, you may want creep mode. I don't think creep mode is a good idea because you can sometimes find yourself in a situation with a rear wheel drive car where your foot is on the brake and the front wheels are fully locked up, but they're being pushed along by the rear wheels. And uh, an automatic rear wheel drive car can do that. Um, depending on how well the brakes hold, sometimes the rear brakes will hold it enough. But if you've got a little bit of momentum, the, the drive in the rear axle could be just enough to push the front end. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about any of the other settings, um, but what I would do, if you know what you're doing, and this is a big if, this is a big caveat, if you're on an owner's group complaining about the vehicle dynamics and driving in the snow, then I probably would not recommend that you turn the stability control off. And if you do have an accident, then your insurance, companies, your insurance company will probably frown upon it very much. Um, but I'm gonna full disclosure, I turn the electric, electronic stability control off in any vehicle when I drive on snow and ice and slippery surfaces um, because I just find that it is too intrusive and it also does not really have a clue with what's going on. But that has definitely come from experience and living in the Alps and spending plenty of time on snow and compacted surfaces and icy roads. So 
that one is mostly up to you to determine. I would not recommend it, even though I do it myself. So do as I say, not as I do. Um, the biggest thing that I, the biggest tip that I want to share with you in this hopefully short video in less than five minutes is set the drive mode to custom, turn off the one pedal mode, turn it to the most gentle acceleration and the most gentle regen as well. And that will give you the best chance of driving this vehicle smoothly. If you can't fit winter tires or all season, you can get reasonable hybrid tires now, but I appreciate you may not want to take off these brand new Dunlop you know, expensive tires just to put on winter tires. Um, if you, I'm in the south of the UK in Southampton, the days of snow that we have can be counted um, by uh, one day per every five years, for example. If you're in a different part of the UK, you may want to consider um, changing and having a set of winter wheels that you can keep winter tires on. Uh, it will completely change your driving experience lighter front wheel drive vehicles you may have never really felt the need to go to uh, like uh, cross climate you know hybrid uh, all season tires or full winter tires because light front wheel drive cars they don't experience the same sort of vehicle dynamics that you do with a big heavy uh, rear wheel drive car with lots of torque. So anyway, I'm waffling far too much. I hope that is helpful to people. Like and comment and subscribe and you'll see me again in the future. Farewell.